All right, so you're in for a bit of a treat with this really interesting Kodiak Ultimate. And when I say a treat, only because it's a very different floor plan from what you might typically see in a travel trailer. I'm here at Colonia Del Rey RV in Corpus Christi, Texas today. And uh, yeah, this was definitely one when I saw on the, the lot, I certainly wanted to stop to, to video because again, it has a very unique floor plan to it. So I'm interested in getting your feedback, what you guys think about it. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, let's start by taking a look at the numbers on this unit. So this is gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating of 9,680 pounds. It's a bit heavier than I thought it would be. Dry weight of 7,300 pounds. I love it when they put the dry weight above the uh, gross vehicle weight rating on this sticker. So easy to get to. 2,340 pounds worth of cargo capacity. That's much higher than I thought. That rivals some fifth wheels. It's gonna ride on 4,400 pound axles and 15 inch D-rated tires. So. Again, you can probably tell from this side, it has kind of a unique look to it because it has one slide over here and it's at the very, very back of this unit. But we're gonna hop inside of this really cool, very different Kodiak Ultimate and see what it's all about. All right, so first stepping up the more I'd step above stairs. This is the 3301 BHSL. Okay. So, it does have a friction hinge door, which I can really appreciate. Basically, it prevents the door from slamming whenever it's windy. Looking inside, you can kind of see what makes this one a bit unique. Typically, this layout is reversed. You see all this stuff on that side, not on this side. So, one of the, the downsides to this is that it's going to be in your camping space. But if you like the floor plan, then... You like the floor plan, right? So this is gonna have a sale price of $53,971, has an MSRP of 66,864. You can see the kitchenette area right here. You have your three burner cooktop, graystone with an oven. You have a huge farm style sink right here, which is nice. Upgraded faucet right here, which I really like. This is the same one we have in our fifth wheel. Nice little faux brick backsplash. You have a little power station right there that pops up so you can plug in USB as well as your 110 outlets. You have some cabinets up top here as well. Has a Greystone compact microwave. You have a nice vent hood here which will vent to the outside as long as you open up the flap on the outside. Has the Dometic 12 volt refrigerator. You know, I haven't seen a lot of these in RVs. Actually looks really nice. Nice stainless steel finish to it. Three drawers right here, a drawer underneath. A good amount of space in this area, which is really nice. If you have a family, the last thing you want to do is feel cramped, especially if you have a slide. And this one slide gives you a fair amount of space right here. Really nice, uh, you know, booth style dinette. This is actually a lot nicer than you typically see. Nice little pull out trays down there so you can access the storage underneath. This converts into a bed and a pretty good sized bed, to be honest. You could probably be upwards of about six foot tall to sleep in this uh, booth area. Interesting light fixture right here. Over here, you have a theater seating. It's manual. You basically pull these, they pop up, and you can recline. So if you have kiddos, this would be where the kiddos would sleep, or if you have extra guests, and then there's a bunkhouse in the back. So we'll take a look at that. You have your TV right here on kind of a swivel arm. You have a shiplap style back to this. Nice little panoramic fireplace there. Little speaker under here that can be removed and used outside as well. Behind the door, you have these really compact cabinets. So this is interesting. It's it's a good size space just uh, with these cabinets. I would have preferred one single door that opens up this way. I get the look, what they're going for, but the reason for that is, is because if the slide is in and this cabinet door pops open during travel, behind this slide, when you pull it out, it's gonna catch this door and probably rip the door off. You have your air conditioning and fan controls here. Coming into the back bunk area. So this has a huge bunkhouse in the back. You could easily sleep a lot of kids back here. Probably two right there, one up here, one up here. This turns into a bed. It's a nice little dinette. You flip this up if you want to be eating. So you're not having to be super scrunched over whenever you're sitting here. And this locks in place when it's up. You have a nice window right here. Nice window here in the back. But a lot of room back here. You have USB ports for all your charging needs whenever you, you're here in the back. And then... You have some storage underneath. What this lacks though is like genuine wardrobe storage. It would have been nice even if they shortened one of these bunks a little bit and put some 
nice wardrobe storage in here so you actually have space for uh, for clothes and things. And this is an interesting spot right here, which we'll see when we get out there. Could they have put it there? Let's take a look at this. So you have a half bath back here, porcelain foot flush toilet. You have some pantry space in here. You have a lower storage area, which also is gonna access plumbing under here as well. Areas there for towels and toiletry. And then you have a medicine cabinet as well. Let's come back out this way and head towards the front. Here are all your controls. This is a Dutchman product, by the way. Okay, so here's your main bathroom. Nice tall shower. Pretty good sized basin as well. Nice porcelain foot flush toilet. This is a huge vanity area. A lot of room around that, that rectangular basin sink. You have a medicine cabinet up here and then your fan up top. And coming up front into the bedroom, king size bed. Dutchman has always kind of been proud of the fact that they can squeeze a king size bed into these units because these sit on a wide frame. So you have a wider body design here. You have some space in the back there for things like a CPAP machine, phone chargers, coffee. Then you have some storage on each side for your wardrobe, plus some cabinets up top here. And then you have more right here. There may be a spot for washer and dryer. There is. So this one is prepped for washer and dryer. Nice little storage drawer underneath there as well. You have pretty limited storage overall for, for clothing in this. Um, only because, you know, if you do put a washer and dryer in there, you're not going to have much space. If you don't, then you have plenty of space. You have your air conditioning system up here. This is a Dometic unit. And then you have another air conditioning system back here. So you have two ACs that are ducted. Anyways, let's take a look at the outside of this unit and see what it's all about. Okay, starting from the front, working our way back. Up front, you have a power front tongue jack, spot for two 20 pound propane cans, power disconnect up here, and a spot for two batteries. Nice fiberglass front cap with some LED lights there, nice windshield up front. Here you have a massive pass through storage. This is huge. This rivals some non drop frame fifth wheels. Huge storage, relatively thin doors. You have power stabilizer jacks on the front and back as well. And they're LED illuminated stabilizer jacks. So that's interesting. You have your Moride step above steps right here. These are all the AccuSlide system. So these are cable driven slides. Underneath this rides on a 10 inch I-beam frame. Cable connection power and a place to mount a TV out here. Underneath this rides on Ridgeway Sport tires. I would upgrade the tires relatively soon. It does have nice aluminum wheels though, and it does have uh, a standard equalizer, so it is not an upgraded suspension equalizer. Coming around back. Little outside refrigerator. If you put like a solar package on here, some people like to utilize this real small refrigerator because it pulls such low power that if you're on the road and you wanna grab a quick drink, you can always hop out and grab a drink from your small outside refrigerator. Fresh water connection here. Got some wires hanging down here. It looks like a repair may have been done to the back stabilization. LED lights here. You have a square tubular bumper that you would throw your sewer hose into if you want to. Spare tire back here. It is wired for a Furion wireless backup camera. On this side, you have an, that other slide, which is in the bunkhouse. Again, it is a cable-driven slide. Coming around this way, here are all of your connections. So you have your city water connection. The other side is your tank fill for your fresh water tank. And then this is your black tank flush, plus power satellite and your 50 amp connection right here. Outside of your furnace. Actually, this is your black tank flush, which means that this is gonna be your water fill and this will be your city water connection interesting and then your sewer connections are right back here and you have another sewer connection right here for your kitchen so they separate it i don't like it when they do that i like it when it's all plumbed together i mean they may have to do that simply to get the flow and this is actually for the bedroom bathroom up here the main master bathroom and the kitchen and then this one's for the back bathroom but yeah i always like it when it's all plumbed together might take more thought, but I think it's more convenient as well. Outside of your water heater, and this is the other side of your pass-through storage. But yeah, that pretty much does it for this Kodiak Ultimate. What do you guys think? 
I think it looks nice, but a very interesting floor plan. It, again, it's kind of the reverse of your traditional bunkhouse where the slides are all on one side. And they may have done that to kind of offset and balance the weight a little bit. I'm not 100% certain, but um, it does look nice. They use some, uh, some nice touches, especially around the booth style dinette and such, but give me your thoughts. You know, something like this, I would only tow it with a three quarter ton or up. I would not put this behind a half ton truck. A lot of overhang on this unit as well. So you gotta be sure that just because you have a big bunkhouse back there, you're not loading it up with all your supplies because that can create sway and instability while you're going down the road. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, I'd really appreciate it. If you took a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I'll be back to talk to you again very soon.